The killer bees are back, y'all. <laughs> Actually, they're not back. That was a little bit of a fib. They never really left, did they? Hi, I'm Jim. I'm Jessica. And you're watching the Green Dream Project. If you've been watching our videos, you know that we had an issue with bees moving into our shed. Now we did some research and we found out that more than likely they were Africanized bees. Because they may have posed a danger, we sought out the help of a professional. We called on a killer bee removal service, but the way they intended to remove it is not quite the way we had envisioned that to go. We kind of envisioned them to kind of take the bees out, maybe relocate them somewhere else, but that's not quite what happened, is it? No, it's more of an extermination. <laughs> an extermination. So he kind of went in, he kind of did some spraying, and then he sealed everything up. If these bees could have been a danger, you gotta think of the people and possibly animals and livestock first. But I'm thinking that these bees were not that aggressive. They didn't attack you, and you were working pretty close to them, weren't you? Uh, yeah, within feet. So there's good news and there's bad news in, in this whole situation. We kind of got mixed feelings. The good news is the bees weren't dead, they lived. What the bee guy said was that uh, following the treatment uh, that the bees could still be around. Uh, they may kind of try and get back into their former home, but with the queen being dead, they would all just kind of eventually, they would eventually all die. die. It's like chopping off the head. But that's not quite what happened, was it? No, and it seemed like they uh, found new ways of getting in. So we saw activity, bees going in, coming out. They were obviously alive and well and strong and they wanted to get back in. They had work to do. This was exciting news for us because we didn't want them to. But we also can't have them in the shed. We need to work out there and friendly or not, if you're doing activity, doing work around their hive, they, they still might attack. But we had an idea. We decided to take matters into our own hands. We were gonna do it ourselves. We reached out to a couple of a uh, couple of our bee friends, our bee experts on YouTube, Kaylee at the Honeystead, Tom from Whistle Thicket. I reached out to them and I was like, "Hey, do you think we could do it ourselves?" And they're like, "Sure, no problem." Maybe that's not quite their exact words, but they felt, "Yeah, you could probably do it yourselves." And they're probably you know, if you take the certain precautions, there shouldn't be any trouble. So we were all prepared for that, right? And we were actually getting kind of excited, weren't we? Yeah, we could be new beekeepers. We were gonna be beekeepers. She had her heart set on it, Oh. So what we had planned was to actually build our own top bar hives. We got bee suits. We planned on making a bee vacuum and we might still do all this stuff, stay tuned. So we were ready, we were ready to cut open that floor pull out these bees, put them in their new hives, put them out somewhere where they could live happily out on the land. But they had other ideas. Talk a little bit about what happened. So the other day when you were out working. When you were away from the homestead, mm -hmm. leaving me alone to deal with all this stuff. Right, I called you up, something was going down. They came out of the hive, they are flying around in the air for a while, and then they settled on the branch of a nearby acacia. Now, bees will have two types of activities. One is called swarming, and the other is absconding. And when they swarm, that's when there's a new queen, and part of the hive will break off from the original hive and find a new place. And when they abscond, that's when the whole hive just picks up out the door. Uh, this most definitely was absconding. What we did see today this time I was here, I witnessed them flying all around the shed, flying all around, all around the solar panels. I'm like, oh man, that's crazy. They got a whole bunch of bee activity again. And you noticed them, this time they balled up on a, on a little bush, right? And they were kind of sitting there for not too long. It was maybe, maybe not even an hour. And then I noticed, oh, they're activity again. And this time they were buzzing up all around the shed and everything like that. And then we. We saw them. 
They took off. They took off. They're Made gone. Made a beeline out of here. I see what you did there. <laughs> She's got jokes, y'all. Nice. That was a good one. Beeline. Yeah, they took off. They went to Bisbee. Bisbee folks, watch out. They're coming for you. So it could have been the chemicals. They found the area unsuitable for some reason. They seem to have left. Now we're making this video. We literally just saw this stuff happen maybe not even an hour ago. Yeah. So we're going to have to see what happens in the coming days because I'm still seeing a few bees around the area. Again, one hive has definitely left. Whether this was the only hive there and all the bees will eventually be going, I don't know, or if there's another hive in there. We're not 100%, right? Not 100%. We could have bees or they could have left, but we do know some did leave. But here's the thing. We just got a whole bunch of stuff. We literally got a whole bunch of stuff to, to get ready for this. We bought bee suits. We bought smokers. We bought a bunch of wood for building hives. We bought stuff to build a bee vacuum. Ah, oh, so much stuff. I got a circular saw, which we absolutely needed for this project, by the way. I'll be using the circular saw, trust me. Uh, <laughs> so we got a whole bunch of stuff and now, what, no bees? That was awfully rude of them. We were gonna build them an excellent house, but I guess I can't blame them because we accidentally tried killing them. So I can, I can understand that they didn't feel quite welcome. So we got mixed emotions. Well, one hand, we're definitely happy that they were still alive, am I right? Yeah, I'm relieved. We had made a mistake, it was our fault completely. Uh, we, we hadn't intended to kill them, but they were alive. But then we were like, oh, we gotta get them out of there, we gotta capture them. So we kind of had our heart set on maybe <laughs> capturing them and putting them in a hive, but- uh, No, we're disappointed. No, we're a little disappointed. But that's okay. We're still gonna get this stuff. We're still gonna, we're probably gonna make some hives yet, I think. We're gonna get the stuff ready. Uh, we're gonna seal it off, so hopefully we don't get bees where we don't want them. And uh, I think we'll be ready to get some bees maybe in the near future. If they don't tell any other bee friends, hey, these guys are jerks. All right, everyone. Uh, thanks a lot. I mean, man, such a bittersweet moment for us. Um, roller coaster. Roller coaster ride of emotions. Because, I mean, we couldn't have them in the shed. No, that wasn't an option. That wasn't an option well, one way or another. I think I suggested turning the shed into a, like a bee barn, but you didn't seem too thrilled about that. Should we have turned the shed into a bee barn? You decide. <laughs> Leave that down below. Bees have a place. They're called hives that go out somewhere there. So definitely a bittersweet time for us. Uh, maybe there'll be bees for in our future, hopefully. All right, thanks a lot for, for joining us um, on this, this roller coaster ride. We really appreciate it. As always, you can catch us on the same off-grid time with the same off-grid channel. We appreciate you stopping by. All right, we'll catch you on the next video, everyone. Bye.